For this lesson, we're going to fill out a handout together. And so it's not so much one of my regular lessons, but we are covering content the same way that we would. So you could get yourself a copy of this handout in advance of watching this lesson. I would suggest you try it on your own and then maybe follow through the lesson to confirm what it is that you hopefully discovered for yourself. We're going to be taking a look at the overall topic of exponential functions, and in particular, we're going to be looking at the graphs of exponential functions. To do that, I'm going to start off with some familiar graphs and compare and contrast those to exponential functions. A little bit of terminology, just so we're talking about the same thing. This should be familiar. Delta Y, that's something that you would see in your slope formula. Delta Y just means the difference, and in particular, it means the first differences. So that's where we take consecutive values and we always take the second minus the first. We can also take something known as a second difference, which is repeating the process using the first differences. So the first differences are the deltas between consecutive values. The second differences are the deltas between first differences. And then sometimes, and quite a bit in exponential functions, you're going to be asked for what's known as the ratio. And the ratio is simply the quotient, the division between two consecutive values. Write this as a simplified fraction if you can, and if you must, write it as a rounded decimal. So let's start off with a table of values, which is always where you want to start when you're graphing something that's unfamiliar to you. You don't want to end with a table of values, though. This is your backup. This is your safety net. So if I start with something simple like y equals 2x, hopefully you recognize that as the equation of a straight line. If I substitute negative 2 for x, I get 2 times negative 2, and that gives me a y-coordinate of negative 4. And then for negative 1, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times 3 is 6. The first differences, which is all I ask for in this particular table, what I do is I take the second y value, which is going to be here, and I subtract from that. Sorry, let me make that a little bit clearer. I take the second y value, which is here, and I subtract from that the y value directly above it or preceding it. So negative 2 minus negative 4, and I'll write it out this one time, negative 2 minus negative 4 is the same as negative 2 plus 4, and that is equal to 2. 0 minus negative 2 is 0 plus 2 is equal to 2. 2 minus 0 is 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. 6 minus 4 is 2. And as you can see, we end up with the result that the first differences are all the same. And if you remember that when you were first introduced to the idea of first differences and linear relations, when the first differences are constant, that means that you have a linear relation or a straight line. Now let's move over to our table of values for another hopefully familiar relation, which is y equals x squared, a simple parabola. Negative 2 all squared is positive 4. One all, negative 1 all squared is 1. 0 all squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. Four, 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. Calculating the first differences. Notice I don't, I've got this top block shaded out because there's nothing before this first value. So I have to start with the second value, 1 minus 4 is negative 3, 0 minus 1 is negative 1, 1 minus 0 is 1, 4 minus 1 is 3, 9 minus 4 is 5. Obviously, my second difference, or sorry, my first differences there are different. This is not linear, and we know it's not linear. This is quadratic. Let's take our second differences. So our second of the first differences, which is this one, minus the preceding one, negative 1, minus negative 3 is the same as negative 1 plus 3, which is equal to 2. 1 minus negative 1 is equal to 2. 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. 5 minus 3 is equal to 2. The second differences are all the same. 
that tells us that this is a quadratic relation. And then finally, we move to hopefully not a new relation for you. Hopefully you've done some work on laws of exponents and the idea of raising something to an exponent shouldn't be completely foreign to you, but maybe not what the graph looks like. So in this case, two to the power negative two, which is the first one I'm going to do in my table of values. If you remember your exponent laws, that is the same as one over 2 to the power positive 2, which is 1 quarter. You could also have achieved that by putting into your calculator, although your calculator probably would have returned 0.25. So I end up with a y value of a quarter. 2 to the negative 1 gives me 1 half. Anything to the exponent 0 gives me 1. 2 to the 1 gives me 2. 2 to the 2 gives me 4. 2 to the 3 gives me 8. Now I take the first differences between these, one half minus one quarter. And again, I'm gonna use a little bit of extra room here to do this. One half minus one quarter is the same as two quarters minus one quarter, which is simply equal to one quarter. So this first difference is a quarter. That's not particularly, that doesn't tell us anything yet. One minus a half is a half. 2 minus 1 is 1, 4 minus 2 is 2, 8 minus 4 is 4. So those are definitely not the same. Now I'm not going to make you go through the process of calculating the second differences. You're going to have to trust me that those also would not have been the same. Now let's take a look at the ratios. So I'm going to take a ratio of this second value compared to this first value. And once again, I'm just going to use a little bit of extra space for my rough work here. The ratio of one half, which is the second value, all over one quarter, which is the first value. A fraction divided by a fraction is the same as the first fraction multiplied by the reciprocal of the second fraction. And from here, we end up with one times four is four, two times one is two which is the same as two over one or simply two. And then we do one divided by a half, and that is two. Two divided by one, that is two. Four divided by two is two. Eight divided by four is two. So as you can see, for exponential functions, for this very basic exponential function, I ended up with a common ratio. Linear was a common first difference, quadratic was a common second difference, and an exponential ended up with a common ratio. So now I'm going to choose three different colors in order to graph all three of these. So I'll start with the linear in blue. My scale, let's see, my x values went from negative two to positive three, and my y values went as high as nine. So I think for my y values, which is what I'm going to be more concerned about, I'll put on a scale 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and that's what I need to make that fit. And I could make better use of my horizontal scale, but I'm worried that might distort things for, for you looking at it. So I'm actually just going to use a what's known as a, an even scale or a one-to-one -one scale. So basically I'm treating every every block as one unit, whether it's in the x direction or whether it's in the y direction. So I said I was going to do these in three colors, but I've actually already used blue for my labeling. So let's start with another color in red, which is my linear. And that's going to be from negative 2, it's y equals 2x. So actually I'm going to graph that even though I've got my table of values there. I know that it has a y-intercept at 0. And I know it has a slope of 2, which means I go up 2 over 1. And I go up 2 over 1. And I could carry on from here, up 2 over 1. Or I could go down 2 to the left 1, down 2 to the left 1, down 2 to the left 1. And that pattern carries on. I will use that to draw my straight line. Let's just put extend it in both directions. 
and I'll go back. That's not what I wanted. Let me turn off the straight line tool and put a couple of arrows on the end of it. And then let's do in green the parabola, which I know has a vertex at 0, 0. And then I'm going to use the step pattern. Even though I've got my table of values, I also trust my ability to graph these out over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, 2, 3, over 1, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I know that on the other side of the y-axis are going to be a set of symmetric points. Over 1, up 1, over 1, up 3, over 1, up 5. And now I'll attempt to draw this. I always have a hard time drawing curves with this tablet. And there's an example of it right there. I always give myself one more try to improve. Not great. And... All right, good enough. We're just trying to get the general idea. And now 2 to the x. Again, I've already done my table of values. At negative 2, I had a value of, of a quarter, which is just above the x-axis. At negative 1, I had a value of a half. At 0, I had 1. At 1, I had 2. I don't know if you can see that over the red. And at 2, I had 4. And if I went to 3, 2 to the power 3 would take me to 8. And this one's going to be the most challenging of them all to graph. If you could see how much I'm concentrating to try to do this nicely, you would probably find that quite amusing. And although we can't really see it here, it's something that we'll talk about the exponential function is going to get steeper faster than the quadratic, faster than that green parabola. And then down here, it's never going to cross the x-axis. It's just going to come in and get closer and closer to the x-axis, but it's never going to go to negative values. So how are they the same and how are they different? Um, we can see that the, and I'm just going to talk through this part, we can see that first of all the parabola comes down and then it goes back up again. So it's quite different there. The parabola goes both up and down, whereas the straight line and the, um, and the exponential are always going up. And you might say, well, it depends on which direction you're looking at it from. But whenever we look at whether something is what we call increasing or decreasing, we always look from left to right. So when we talk about them, there's some consistency. And so if we go from left to right on the red one, on the straight line, it's going up to the right. The purple one is going curving, but it's still curving up to the right. But the green one actually comes down to the right, and then it goes up to the right. Um, we notice that the, of course, the red one, which is linear, it's increasing at the same rate the whole time. That's the slope. The green one and the purple one are increasing at steeper and steeper rates as we go. But the green one also increases at a very steep rate on the left side of the y-axis, whereas the purple one approaches the x-axis, and that's very important. Um, so the exponential 2 to the x approaches the x-axis. And this is something we're going to talk about. This is known as a horizontal asymptote. By this point in the course, you should have encountered vertical asymptotes. And so this is another type of horizontal asymptote. So y equals 2 to the x represents exponential functions. What properties do you notice for this graph? It, it always increases. We, we talked about that. So I'm going to use inc for increasing. And don't forget, this is when we read from left to right. It is always positive. And it has this thing known as a horizontal asymptote. Which we quite often will use a short form HA 
and it's got the equation y equals zero. It is simply the equation of the y-axis. Uh, some other features you might notice, it has a y-intercept, and that y-intercept occurs at zero, one. And the reason for the one is because two to the power zero, or more importantly, anything to the power zero is equal to one. It has no x-intercepts. And that's also another interesting feature. It's always positive. It's always above the x-axis. And other relevant things we'll talk about as we go, but that's good enough for now, highlighting some of the ways that it's different than those others. So we're doing some more tables of values. That's why I gave this as a sheet to do on your own. I'm not doing, other than pointing out some of those properties, the, the graphing part is not something you should need me for. So what about something like three to the X or four to the X? What kind of differences are we going to see there? Three to the negative two works out to be one over nine. Three to the negative one is one over three. Three to the zero is one. Three to the one is three. Three to the two is nine. Three to the three is 27. Let's immediately skip over to this four to the X. 4 to the negative 2 is 1 over 16. 4 to the negative 1 is 1 over 4. 4 to the 0 is 1. 4 to the 1 is 4. 4 squared is 16. And 4 cubed is 64. So you can see this is one of the features of an exponential function I want you to make note of. Notice how fast those y values are starting to increase. The delta y's, the change in y's, I'm not going to do this in rough work, so you can pause this, you can take a look at this on your own. One third minus one ninth is three ninths minus one ninth, which is actually two ninths, kind of an awkward, pardon me, an awkward fraction. One minus one third is two thirds. Three minus one is just two. Nine minus three is equal to six and 27 minus nine is equal to 18. And I could do this again, to be honest with you, I'm just not going to bother with the second differences. We know these are exponential. We know the second differences aren't going to give us anything useful. And then if I do two thirds divided by two ninths to get my first ratio, which really I don't have a ratio to put there, I actually should put this in the next box down, same thing goes here. Two-thirds divided by two-ninths turns out to be equal to three. Two divided by two-thirds is three. Six divided by two is three. Eighteen divided by six is three. And what do you notice? That three, it's common. The, the ratio is common, telling us it's exponential. But you'll also notice that three is actually the base of the exponential function. Three to the x not surprisingly, gives a common ratio of three. One quarter minus one sixteenth is equal to four sixteenths minus one sixteenth, that's three sixteenths. One minus a quarter is three quarters. Four minus one is three. 16 minus four is 12. And 64 minus 16 is 48. Just as before, I'm going to skip over this idea of doing the second differences because we know it's exponential. We're not going to get any additional information out of this. And then I go on to my ratios. Three quarters divided by three sixteenths actually works out to be, not surprisingly, four. And you should verify this, but three divided by three quarters is four. Twelve divided by three is four. Forty-eight divided by twelve is four. And of course, that is the common ratio. For my vertical scale to graph this, I need to go all the way up to 64. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 vertical blocks to work with. So I really just need to do 10 per block. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, just so I can fit on everything. Now that's going to mean that the lower values are going to be really low. For example, at negative 2 at 1 ninth, that's just going to be next to the x-axis. I can't do any better than that. At negative 1, and now I'm going to exaggerate it at, one, at 0, I'm going to put it a little bit further up. 
that's probably still too much for my scale. At one, again, I have to go up a little bit, so I'll go to three. Now at two, we're almost at 10, so I can put that on. And then at three, I go all the way up very rapidly, actually, to 27. And then I will put on my red graph, which is four to the X, and it's going to have the same problem, which is incredibly close to the x-axis for these x-coordinates that are negative. Now, the one thing they have in common is this point is actually the same. They both have a y-intercept of 1. Then we have at 1, it's 4, which is a little bit above that blue dot. And then at uh, 2, it's 16, which is quite a bit further up than the corresponding dot. And then at 3, we're at 64, which is a long way higher than the other one. So what we want to see is that over here on the left, they really look almost indistinguishable from each other. And then as we get to the right, it gets really steep really quickly. And the, while the other one also gets steep quickly, it just doesn't get so steep as quickly as four to the X. And so that's my, that's my effort at this anyway. But the important thing here to keep in mind is that exponential functions, regardless of their type, they do get steep very quickly. All right, a couple of variations here. Now, what happens if I put in fractions? as my base. So in this case, I've got a half to the x. Here, I've got a third to the x. It might be worth it to write out this one. One half to the x when I have negative two, and I guess I'll just have to use my margin here. One half to the negative two is the same as, well, a negative exponent means that's one over one half to the positive two, which is one over a quarter and one over a quarter works out to be the same as four. So this is actually going to be four, and then one half to the negative one turns out to be two. Anything to the zero is one, so it doesn't matter whether it's a fraction or a number bigger than one there, a number less than one or bigger than one. One half to the one is a half, then we get a quarter, then we get an eighth. And I'm not going to go, we know that the First differences are not going to give us anything particularly useful here. We know that the second differences are not going to give us anything particularly useful here. And then when I get into my ratios, I actually can take my ratio here. I do 2 divided by 4, and then I end up with a half. And I do 1 divided by 2, and I end up with a half. And I do a half divided by one, and I end up with a half. A quarter divided by a half, I end up with a half. And an eighth divided by a quarter, I end up with a half. I'm going to have to pause here for a moment because I realize I think I have to go back. And I need to explain something that happened when I did my ratios above. Because I just noticed it that I previously I had, I had, put x's through those squares because I said, well, I can't take the ratios there. But I absolutely can. When I did my ratios, I did the ratios of the first differences. I did the ratios of the first differences in both cases, but I ended up with a base that matched my exponential function. It turns out, and this is maybe as good a place, even with this little mistake that I just made there, it illustrates something very important. Whether you do the ratios of the y values or the first differences or the second difference, you should get, with perfect data, you're going to get exactly the same thing. So one third divided by one ninth, it turns out is three. One divided by one third is three. Three divided by one is three. But taking the ratios of the first differences, two thirds divided by two ninths is also three. And that actually would have been true over here. So I apologize for the mistake that I made there. But it turns out that that mistake, as corny as this may sound to say, was actually a learning moment to allow me to point out to you or to remind me to point out to you that the ratio of the differences also is going to give the common ratio 
for the exponential function. So let's see if I can press on from here without any additional errors. One third to the negative two works out to be one over one ninth, which is actually equal to nine. And then one third to the negative one is three. Anything to the zero is zero. Then we get a third, then we get a ninth, and we end up with 1 27th. Now you can see those, just as the exponential function can get large in one direction, it can also get so incredibly small in the other direction. So let's go ahead and graph these. At negative 2, I have positive 4, and I'm just going to use one block per unit. So that would make this 5. And then at negative 1, I have positive 2. At 1, or sorry, at 0, I have 1. At 1, I have a half. Then I have a quarter. Then I have 1 eighth. And I'm getting so close to the x-axis. Now, if you thought that I was struggling to draw this before, it only gets worse when I'm trying to go in this direction. So please bear with me. And I know that this direction is hard enough for me. I'm not even going to try to, to fix that. So now you can see that this one, with that fractional exponent, this one is sweeping down to the right. The other one was going up to the right. This one's going down to the right. And then we do the red one, which is 1 third to the x. At negative 2, we have positive 9, which should place it 6, 7, 8, 9 on 1, 2 high. So that should be 9. And then at negative 1, it's at positive 3. At 0, it's the same location. Then it is 1 third, which is a little bit below, and 1 ninth, which is a little bit below, and 1 27th, which certainly 1 eighth and 1 27th seems like a big difference, but it's actually just degrees of how small they are. So again, let's see what I can do here. Not very well. I'm going to give myself a second attempt on that one. It's very steep. Oh, just terrible. So that's, well, fine. I don't normally let myself, that's just going to bother me. So let's see if I can't go incredibly slowly there and join those two. So you would still say that the red one is changing more rapidly than the blue one, but now you have a couple of functions that are always decreasing as opposed to always increasing. So what do you notice about the graph when the base is greater than 1, 3 to the x and 4 to the x? They are always increasing. That's the Okay, so they have that shape. What do you notice about the graph when the base is a number less than one? For example, a half is less than one, a third is less than one. These ones are always decreasing. And so we end up with that shape. And there's actually a special name that goes with each of those. Always increasing is known as exponential growth. And always decreasing is known as exponential decay. And maybe you've heard of those, particularly if you've done any chemistry or some physics, you might have learned about exponential growth or exponential decay. Okay, now in this case, finally, some nice looking graphs. I'm not going to have you graph this one, which means I don't have to graph it myself. I have provided you the graph of 3 to the x, 1 third to the x, and then 3 to the minus x. One of the things I want you to notice is that the, the shape looks the same. There's a certain symmetry between the graphs. And one way that we might describe that 
is when we talk about the symmetry between the graphs is to talk about what's known as a horizontal reflection or a reflection in the y-axis. And so that's one thing you might notice. And then the other thing is that one third to the x is the same as three to the minus x. And we know that from an algebraic point of view. One third to the x is the same as three to the minus x. Well, that's actually one of the definitions of exponent laws. If I write it slightly differently, three to the minus x is one over three to the x. But since one to the anything is still one, we can actually combine those into the same bracket and we end up with one third to the x. So what conclusion can you make about negative exponents? Um, they just change the base. To one over the base. So if you have b to the negative x, that is equivalent to one over b to the x. And that works for whole numbers or for fractions. What ordered pair point do exponential functions all have in common? And we noticed that it was the y-intercept. They all had a y-intercept at 1. And that's because b to the 0 is equal to 1. It doesn't actually matter what the base is. If you raise it to the exponent 0, you end up with a value of 1. So for this generic exponential relation, y equals b to the x, to represent it as a function, what kind of values do we need? Well, it turns out, if you think back to all the examples that I gave you there, um, in order to do an exponential function, it turns out that all of the values that we look at are positive values. And we don't actually, we also, we don't bother with a base of one because a base of one is really meaningless in this case. One to the anything is just one. So that wouldn't have that same curve. For um, exponential growth, b must be what? We talked about that. b must be greater than 1. Do I have room to write greater than 1 here? And the function does what? Does it increase or decrease? Well, exponential growth is where the function is increasing. And they're all going to have an asymptote at y equals 0. At least the parent functions will. For exponential decay, you must have a situation where b is between, let me just write that out, 0 less than b less than 1. And the function is going to be decreasing if we have exponential decay. And yet, we're going to have that same asymptote at y equals 0. OK, and that is it for this particular lesson. There are some exercises that also go along with this from your textbook.